Hello everyone, welcome, the snowman here, and today I'm going to be finishing up my final group for my Women's World Cup Preview Series. Today we're looking at the four teams in Group F, and they are the United States, Thailand, Chile, and Sweden. If you haven't caught my first five videos in this series, I already previewed Groups A through E, so please check them out if you want to. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing on Group F, expectations, qualifying, uh, star players and coaches, taking a look at these four teams. We'll begin with the title favorites in France, the United States, and even for the United States women's national team's lofty standards, they had an incredible qualifying campaign in CONCACAF on five games, five wins, 26 goals scored, and maybe even more impressively, zero goals conceded. Uh, that's where most of the question marks normally lie with this team on the defensive side, but they really shut things down. We're able to beat a great Canadian side 2-0 in the final, so I was very happy with everything I saw out of the USA's defense. So far in 2019, they have been great. Uh, six straight wins, unbeaten in nine matches. They did lose 3-1 to France in France uh, back in January, so that defeat a bit worrisome. But overall, just one defeat in the last 24 months. I like their form. Coach Jill Ellis has to love the position of her team uh, heading into the World Cup. Speaking of Ellis, she is the well-known leader of the Stars and Stripes. The 52-year-old has been the coach of the U.S. since 2014, and Ellis hit it big in 2015 when she in the U.S. won the World Cup in Canada. That was their third World Cup title all-time. Uh, Ellis was also the FIFA Women's Coach of the Year in 2015. I love Ellis. She's got a great pulse of this team, a great mix of calmness, but also a fantastic motivator. Star player, I could go so many different ways here with the U.S. Women's National Team. Uh, Alex Morgan is the clear face of the team. No one has more raw star power than her. I could also say Lindsay Horan is the star. Uh, she might be the most talented player on this team. Julie Ertz is also a good candidate. So tough and so versatile. But my eyes still tell me every time I watch the USA that Megan Rapino is the best player on this team. She's the most consistent on that left flank. She just makes things happen. So crafty, so fearless when the U.S. is in need of a late goal. I feel like Rapino is most likely to be that savior. Uh, her level of class so much higher than everyone around her. Game looks incredibly slowed down to Rapino. You can't rush her into mistakes. In my opinion, she is the best player on the United States. So the U.S. and France are kind of the joint favorites to win this competition on paper, both hovering around 3-1 to one odds or plus 350, depending on uh, your bookkeeper. Part of me thinks France deserves to be the favorite. I mean, they've got home field advantage. They've already beaten the USA, like I said, in 2019. But the reason I think the USA deserves to be uh, the favorite for this World Cup, too much depth. Over a month-long tournament, you need more than just 11 great players, and the USA really is 23 strong. You can bring off a, a great two-way midfielder off the bench like Sam Mewis. You've got a young superstar in Mallory Pugh who doesn't get consistent starts and consistent minutes because Megan Rapino and Tobin Heath are just so amazing on the flanks. Uh, you have a, a stone-cold sniper off the bench in striker Kristen Press. Carly Lloyd, even at uh, her older age now, can't stop scoring goals. So I love the depth of the USA. So much talent up and down. It's the best roster in France. And, uh, you know, I expect them to win Group F and anything less than a World Cup title for the USA would be a huge disappointment. Now, one team I don't anticipate winning the World Cup will be Thailand. They've got the lowest odds of any team to win at 2,000 to 1. But uh, Thailand had some impressive performances at the AFC Women's Asian Cup, which acts as the qualifying for the World Cup. Uh, they lost to China initially, but then they upended Philippines and Jordan by a combined 9-2 to to finish second in their group. And then perhaps in the shock result of all of qualifying, uh, they took one of the best teams in the world, Australia, to a penalty shootout, lost that 3-1 to in the shootout. But uh, thanks to, you know, making the semifinals, their ticket to the World Cup already booked. So, uh, you know, Asia, they get five teams for some reason to the World Cup. I think that's too much. I'd rather have more South American or European teams, but that's another discussion. Nonetheless, uh, Thailand will be at their second and back-to-back -back World Cup. For the coach of Thailand, uh, I'm going to level with you. I am not 100% sure how to pronounce this name. Uh, Nguyen Grutai Satengwen. Uh, the second stint with the team was the coach of Thailand actually for their last World Cup in 2015. Led their team uh, to the first and only victory at the World Cup, a 3-2 win over the Ivory Coast. And the star player for Thailand, Kanjana Sungyeon, a 32-year-old veteran striker who seems to score all the clutch goals for her country. Uh, had some vital goals to help Thailand reach Canada in 2015 and then France this year. She's a good athlete, strong, quick, loads of experience. And I really wish these Thai names were a bit easier to pronounce, but she definitely garners our respect. 
So it would be irresponsible for me to predict a surplus of success for Thailand this summer. Uh, they're certainly a good story. I'm all for uh, women's football growing in all these non-traditional football countries. I love it. Thailand, you know, more power to them. Uh, they've got a chance against Chile. I don't think they have any chance, though, against the USA or Sweden. I'm sorry if you're a fan, but there is no chance that Thailand uh, makes it out of Group F. Now, our third team in Group F, another team that is up against the odds. They are one of four teams making their World Cup debuts at this event. And it was a magical Copa America Femenina for La Roja, who uh, second in their group wins over both Peru and Uruguay. Just one loss in seven games. And that lone defeat for Chile came against Brazil. So... That was in the final stage. Pretty good showing for Chile. On the final match day, they came up with a clutch 4-0 win over Argentina. Another team that'll be at this World Cup to officially book their ticket. Chile, definitely one of the teams I don't know a ton about, but I am so excited to watch them uh, at the finals in France. The head coach for the Chileans, Jose Letelier, who is a former goalkeeper and has been Chile's coach since 2015, uh, has a lot of experience coaching women's soccer at club level in Chile as well. Led his former club's women's side to 10 straight domestic titles, and his former PE teacher could not be more excited about the opportunity this summer. Then for star player, we have a true star in Cristiane Endler, 27-year-old six-foot goalkeeper who is a leader of the highest order. I think she's the first time I've actually given the star player title to a goal Goalie, but she's just got so many accolades a three-time Chilean player of the year current goalie of one of the best clubs in the world Paris Saint Germain and she has everything you want in a goalie she made her national team debut at age 15 and uh, by the way her idol growing up the great Germany and Bayern Munich keeper Oliver Kahn kind of unfortunate for Chile that they get to play Thailand last in this group so through two matches you figure they'll likely be sitting on zero points after defeats to uh, the USA and Sweden. Overall, I think they're going to be uh, one of those third place teams that doesn't make it through. Remember, only four of the six third place teams will advance to the knockout stage. I, I just think some of the other teams fighting for those spots, teams like China, Italy, are a slight cut above the Chileans. But uh, the round of 16 would be the absolute ceiling for this team. The final team in Group F is Sweden. Shout out my Zlatan Ibrahimovic jersey hanging up on the wall. Uh, Sweden actually faced some adversity during their European qualifying campaign. They've never missed a World Cup. They did fall to Ukraine 1-0 uh, for their one loss. And then it came down to the final match day for the Swedes. They needed a result against their rival Denmark. And it was... Uh, Sophia Jakobsen, who uh, struck to make it a 1-0 win over the Danes, and the form has taken a dip a bit in 2019. Sweden has losses to Portugal, Canada, and Germany already this year, but as the USA uh, knows all too well, Sweden always a dangerous team at these major tournaments. Coaching the Swedes this summer will be Peter Gerhardsen, a 59-year-old former forward who's got some big shoes to fill in his first major tournament as the head coach. He took over for uh, Pia Sundhaga after Euro 2017, and he does have some experience coaching the U16 and U17 Swedish men's teams. Uh, Gerhardsen, a very confident guy, said after the draw initially in December, we can handle the best team in the world in the USA, and we can go all the way. For a Swedish star, you've got loads of great players on Sweden. No Lasha Shailin anymore, but they still have Caroline Sager and Nila Fischer. I'm going with one of their young stars, Stina Blackstanius, who will play a key part of the attack in France. I still remember her counterattacking goal against Hope Solo in the USA at the Olympics three years ago. Uh, she helped Sweden defeat the USA that day in the quarterfinals. Blackstanius, though, so fast, powerful, clever in front of the net. She had excellent form in qualifying three goals in seven appearances for the 23-year-old striker. My expectations, I think Sweden is just as strong as they've been in the last six to eight years. A slightly revamp with the new coach, new philosophy, and a lot more young talent than we're used to seeing with the Swedes. They've got a puncher's chance to beat the USA or, or even draw the Stars and Stripes and potentially win this Group F. I think more than likely, though, they will finish second in the group. That would set up a, a round of 16 clash with either Canada or the Netherlands. And then, you know, Sweden, they've got a wide range of outcomes. Anything from the round of 16 to the semifinals would not surprise me for this very talented European side. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please check out my other group previews for A through E. Check out my predictions that will be up very soon as well for uh, the World Cup finals that are, well, less than a week away now. So it's very close. And I'm very excited. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media, and uh, I'll be back very soon. Cheers.